Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of the cutest accessories for your baby today called a dribble bib. I have been seeing these absolutely everywhere. What's a dribble bib was what I asked because I don't have little ones anymore. Well, I do remember when my kids were little and they were teething. Of course they had bibs during meal time, but after meal time the bib came off, but still they just kept drooling, of course, because they're teething. So someone came up with a really cute idea about a dribble bib, and we've got our own little version of that that I'm going to share with you today. Look how cute these little bibs are. And so now, instead of having a wet onesie all day long or a little wet shirt all day long, this will be catching all that little dribble and drool. So 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 quick and so easy the ones that we have here were made with the uh, fee company collection by sweetwater for motive fabrics and that comes in five adorable colorways and look how cute these bibs are on our babies we have the splash colorway navy black apple red and vanilla so today I'll be using the splash colorway. I just fell in love with that. I love that teal look. So let's put all these others aside for now. The great news is, is if there's so many fat quarters on our website, you will absolutely find so many to choose from. And this makes a fantastic gift for a baby shower. Because I know when I go to a baby shower, I love to give a handmade gift. Um, and so if you could give a quilt and then maybe some dribble bibs as well, that mother-to-be is going to be absolutely thrilled. So out of the fat quarters, each fat quarter will give you one bib. So on this bib right here, we went ahead and just made it the same fabric. But on this bib right here, we went ahead and we did it double-sided. So I want to show you how to do the double-sided because I love fabric and I love to use a variety just to mix it all up. Now at the end we'll show you how to make these this cute bow accessory if you've got a baby girl out of the leftover fabric. So let's put that aside. On the bottom of our homepage, there's a link that says free patterns. Click on that and it'll take you directly to this where you can just print this and then cut this out. So you'll just cut directly on the lines. This shape is for the headband. So if you're not going to be making it a matching headband, you don't need to cut that out. So let's get our two fat quarters. For one of the fat quarters, go ahead and turn it right sides together. And for your other fat quarter, let's turn it with the right side out. This makes a, a mirror image. By folding the fabric this way, when you cut this out, they should be a mirror image of each other and your bib will line up more specifically. You'll see what I mean when we get going. So I'm making sure that everything is folded. So if you can see that, the folds line up and they're stacked one right on top of another. Now on your pattern shape, the dashed line of course is going to be your sew line. And there's a dash line here that says place on fold. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll place that on the fold. Make sure that you're lined up in such a way, let me square that up a little bit better, that you're not going to be um, accidentally missing the fabric underneath. So always be sure to check. It looks like I'm good. And you see how now you have room to actually make a second bib. So that's how you can get out of two fabrics, you can get two bibs. How fun is that? So now that that's all lined up, I'll take my pins and I'll just pin that together. And that just holds my pattern in place so I can then go with my scissors and cut everything out. And I like to do this instead of trying to hold this and cut, it just doesn't work because then it tends to shift. So do take the time to go ahead and pin right through your pattern. And then just with an ordinary pair of scissors, we will cut just outside our line. Now be careful, you don't cut your pattern piece. But of course, if you do, that's not a big deal. You could go download the pattern again and just cut it out. So let's cut exactly just outside our line. And you're gonna be amazed at how fast. See, I accidentally cut my pattern, that's fine. Okay, so now that that's cut out, you'll just take out your pins, 
put your pattern piece aside. You'll know you'll be using this again because when we made the first bed, we were like, oh, we got to keep going. It was just too cute. And of course, I went to the fat quarter section on our website and looked at all the combinations. It's just an endless amount. So speaking of fat quarter sets, when you go to the website, if you click on fabrics, a menu will open up for you. Just click on pre-cuts and that'll take you right to the fat quarter. So you can look for some fat quarter sets that fit um, your baby style. So let's open this up now. That'll be the front and the back. And we will place right sides together. And we will go ahead. I like to put in at least a couple pins so it doesn't shift while I'm sewing. So let's see, if I start sewing from here, I wanna have my pin pointing this direction. So I'll just put a couple pins along here. And then when I come back, we'll go ahead and we're gonna sew a quarter inch all the way around, but we're gonna make sure in this straightaway right here that we're gonna actually leave an opening so we can turn everything right side out. Okay, so I've sewn around the bib. Might be easier for you to see actually on this side. I reinforce the opening um, because you'll be turning the bib through this opening and I always like to go forward and back a couple times and reinforce that otherwise when you turn it right side out, it can start to unravel. Another thing we discovered is that if we clip these little corners right here, it just makes it a little easier to turn smoothly. So, when you um, clip that though, just make sure you're not clipping through the very thread you just, you just sewed. So let's go ahead now and we'll turn everything uh, right side out. And I did want to mention, I use just a quarter inch seam allowance. If you do, um, so with a larger seam allowance, the bib will get smaller. So I use just a quarter inch seam on that. So you'll turn everything right side out once I get everything turned out, we'll take it to the ironing board and we'll just press it through so it's nice and flat. So I turned this right side out. Um, sometimes these don't wanna come out real easily. So what I'll do is maybe use my fingers, you know, maybe a pair of scissors not quite this sharp that I can kind of get in there and gently get that corner out. You just kind of work it out as best you can. Um, and then, uh, what I do at that point is I just, I kind of feel where that seam is and I kind of just roll that with my fingers and then you just press it out. Now the opening, what I did with the opening is I just turned that in a quarter of an inch, maybe just a little bit, just a little bit more than that. Let's clean that thread off. So I tuck that inside, press that as well now what we'll do is take this to this, um, let me show you what it looks like on this, this one. We'll take it to the sewing machine and you're sewing just inside that edge which will enclose this and it just looks stylish. It kind of finishes it. And then when we come back, we'll sew the Velcro on. But for now, let's go ahead and sew just inside this edge all the way around. I have just a uh, cream thread, a beautiful superior thread, just a beautiful creamy color. You could choose another color if you wanted to do a dark navy. Choose whatever you want and let's go get that step done. Now our bib is ready to get the Velcro. Um, that's what we use to secure the bib in the back versus a snap. It just seems to work a little bit better because you can adjust the bib to be just a little bit longer for your baby as your um, child grows. So we chose a Velcro that was three quarters inch wide, um, nothing special about it. Um, so you're just gonna cut that about an inch and a half long. And when we first uh, were assembling the bibs, when we tried to pin it, the pins don't really go through Velcro very well at all. There's just a lot of resistance to it. So we used our temporary basing glue, which is what I actually use for oh, a ton of crafts and definitely my applique. And this is water soluble. So the first time that you go to wash the bib, this will come out and it doesn't get really stiff. So just a couple drops on the back. And let's put that right in position. We just kind of eyeballed it. Thought that was kind of a logical place and I've already put, um, glued some down to that side as well. Now we'll take it to the sewing machine. If you sew up this side, come to the diagonal, 
come across the bottom, the other diagonal, you'll, you should cover all of the sides. So let's take that to the machine now and we'll secure our Velcro down to both flaps of our bib and our bib will be complete. But then I will show you how to make the coordinating headband. Now that your dribble bib is complete, it's reversible. Isn't that great? It can be either way. That's why I love to use the two fabrics instead of just one because it gives you two styles. Um, but if you have a baby girl and would like to make the coordinating headband, let me show you how to do that right now. We brought some elastic that was um, really pretty, just white, narrow, about a half an inch wide. You can use an existing headband that your baby already wears and use that as your length um, and of course you'll take that to the sewing machine and just secure that. Um, if you don't have a headband for your baby already, just measure her head from behind her head up across the top. Whatever that uh, measurement is, take a couple inches away because you do want this to be fairly snug. So uh, once you get that distance, again, just cut it, overlap, do a, several stitches here to secure it. Then with your extra fabric, You'll take your template, that's the free download, and again, it's placed on the fold, and this is gonna go together just like the dribble bib, where you have the two fabrics. You're going to place it on the fold, you'll pin and cut out. The assembly of that is completely the same. You'll turn it right side out, top stitch it, so that'll get you to this position here, where you have this and we use just the one fabric in this particular instance so you'll get to this place then when you take it to the headband where you secure the elastic that's where the knot will be so let's keep that so you can see that so we'll come to this here and we'll just tie a knot and you just kind of want to work the knot so that it ends up that the bow is running horizontal along the elastic. So you just kind of work it through until it looks just exactly the way you want to. So how cute is this? Your baby not only will have a nice dry shirt because the dribble will be catching all of that drool from their teething, but then they also have a cute headband if you've got a baby girl. I hope you enjoyed this video today on how to make dribble bibs and matching headbands for your baby.